Inside Out 2 is finally out playing in theaters, and this is one that I've been dying to check out since the first time I saw the first film. I literally remember walking out of the theater when watching the first movie and just immediately wanting the second film because this is a franchise that could expand onto many different movies because of the novelty of new emotions coming in when you grow up. So, you know, I think that's a great idea for a sequel. And... I think the first film is incredible. One of the greatest Pixar films, which is a high, high bar considering how great most of their films are or used to be. But like, I still love a lot of films that Pixar has dropped in the 2020s. So I wouldn't really say they fell off or whatever. One part of me was scared, or should I say anxious, I'm sorry, that this wouldn't live up to the monumental expectations I'd set up with the first film. But I'm so happy to report that while still not being as great, Inside Out 2 is a worthy sequel that lived up to the standards that I set up of its predecessor. Starting off talking about the new emotions because all of them play a pretty relatively large part in this movie, especially Maya Hawke's anxiety, who delivers such a memorable, vo memorable voice performance that I can't wait for her to return to the next sequel, which let's be honest, is going to happen considering what the numbers for this weekend are looking like for this movie. This movie is going to be huge, maybe even a billion dollar picture, I don't know. AOA Debris is great as Envy, who is a scene stealer every time she's on screen. And there's one specific scene with anxiety towards the climax of this movie that not that was not only like powerful in terms of what an anxiety attack would look like on a teenager, but it was also kind of scary in a sense. Like it was really cool how they did it. Great, great stuff. The fitting in with the cool kids, the wanting to impress the people around you but not wanting to hurt the feelings of your friends, moving on to a new lifestyle without the people you've known for years. It's all done really, really well and is really relatable. So I love that aspect of this movie because Inside Out, the first one, was relatable towards a preteen and this one was relatable towards a teen. I don't know why she's going into high school at 13, but that was kind of off-putting for me. Um, Seeing the infamous triple dent gum commercial return for one last or one more time, not last time, was probably the highlight of this movie. I'm obviously joking, but it was really, really cool. One thing I wasn't prepared for was how damn funny this movie was. Whether you're talking about that one video game character that Riley has a crush on that shows up, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. Or Pouchy, who annoyed me to death, but was still pretty entertaining. And there's like a little payoff with that joke at the end that I thought was handled really, really well and actually made me laugh, so... You know, actually a lot of this movie made me laugh because there's some great jokes in here. Every single one of the characters delivers some kind of joke that's actually funny. Especially Anger, who I loved way more in this movie than the previous film. Actually, I think I loved every single one of the core emotions, the main core emotions from the first film in this movie than the first one because they're better explored in this movie. They actually get to go in on the action, go explore different parts of Riley's mind where in the first film they were just stuck at headquarters. So that was pretty cool to see. Unfortunately, where this good, there's the mixed and bad. And I have a few issues here, including how little Riley's mom and dad are in this movie for. There's an idea implemented at the start of the movie where Family Island is being shrunken down in favor of Friendship Island. And I really thought that was gonna come into play later, but no, just a little gag. Secondly, I did feel like the movie was rushing through a bit of anxiety's villainy of anxiety's villainy could have used more time to breathe but it didn't take much away from the film there was no like big climactic emotional take her to the moon for me type moment in this movie than like the first which is fine just kind of unexpected because this wasn't as emotionally satisfying as i expected or really wanted it to be but it still had some heartfelt sequences especially towards the end of the film with joy going through another character arc sometimes it can feel repetitive sometimes it can feel like the same film with them just trying to get back to headquarters but there's enough new and uniqueness in here that makes it fine i guess overall great animation of course it's pixar a solid and satisfying conclusion a great score cool new characters and an important message about growing up and how change is scary but crucial underlining the big picture here a giant winner for pixar giant giant winner especially in terms of box office and quality and everything, though I really liked Elemental from last year. So a giant winner for Pixar and one of the greatest films of 2024.